Shabbat Shalom. We are in a, a season of celebration right now. Tomorrow, Hanukkah starts. The feast of Hanukkah begins. And during the coming week, we celebrate Christmas. And tomorrow is the fourth Advent. which is a, s a special feast for Russian-speaking people. We will have uh, many feasts. <coughs> Last Monday, I gave a seminar uh, about when was the Messiah born. And I thought I would carry, I would wear uh, Christmas colors. And today also I have this red pullover on. The, I wear the red colored pullover. This is only a sign of solidarity for those who celebrate Christmas. And we are related, we are connected with each other. <coughs> and those people who celebrate Christmas, we know that they celebrate the birth of Christ, the Messiah, the birth of the Jewish Messiah, the Jewish King. We are a Jewish Messianic congregation and we talk a lot about Jews and Jewish people. We do not say what is not in the Bible, it's not written in the Bible, because the Bible often talks about Israel and the Jewish people and this is why we talk about it. How could it be different? It can't be different. Other churches do not speak about it or just say not much about this. This is why those who are guests among us they, they might think why so many times they speak about Jews. Ah, the other, the other peoples in the world, the other nations, are they not less important? Are they less important? No. <laughs> the guests that come to us, they are not used that, that one talks about Jews in, in churches. You hear not so much about Jewish people. And about the connection between Jesus and Jews, it's hardly talked about in churches. We talk less about Jews, less than, less than is talked about in the Bible. We talk about them, but... And those who are not used to hear that, they think that we talk much about Jews. And in my opinion, we do not uh, even talk 10% of what the Bible says. But when you read the Bible, everywhere you find Jews. And when it's about other peoples, nations, 
then everything is well with them when they are well and in good relations with the God of Israel. You cannot pass them when you read the Bible. You, you cannot neglect them. You have to see it when you read the Bible. This is why many may say we are the present Israel, and some even say you don't have to read the Old Testament, it's not so important. And that is related to the Jews that lived at uh, former times. We have the New Testament now, and we live different times. We live in different times, so it's not important to read the Old Testament. That's what people say. On last Thursday, I was in a church and I asked questions, questions and answers, talking round. And some, and somebody asked uh, the God in the Old Testament was different. How is a Jew? Um, how is a Jew uh, seeing grace? In the Old Testament, he seems to be angry and cruel. And in the New Testament, he seems to be so good. And he uh, forgives sin. Does a Jew have the, um, the, the, the view of grace and an opinion about grace or an understanding about grace? And I love such kind of questions. Uh, and I answered, look, uh, at first sight, it's a misunderstanding. Everything, everything is built upon grace among Jews. We, today we sing the liturgy. And all the time during the liturgy we are singing uh, thanks because of your grace, your mercy. And we are always singing about grace during the liturgy, the grace of God. And we understand that we cannot exist without His grace. We as a people would not exist without His grace. And let us look at the Old Testament a little bit closer. Look, you can see that God forgives Israel. Independently about which sin it's dealing about, he forgives sin, he gives new life to Israel, and he forgives again and again. Israel is not wiped out, not destroyed. And if when I read the Old Testament, everywhere I, I, I see grace. God says, I will gather you, I will give you good life. And I will give you a new heaven and a new earth. And the lion and the lamb lie together, there, are no, there will be no wars anymore. The Lord says, I will give you such a good time. And all of this is Old Testament. And I say, now, look, now we come to the New Testament. And what is expecting us? What do we have to expect? Crying, eternal fire, crying in pain and eternal fire worms eating you up. <laughs> Look, it's a sea of fire and people are thrown into it, will be thrown into it. That's the New Testament talk. 
There's nothing like that in the Old Testament. There is no word about the a lake of fire where people are eternally thrown into. Look, which testament is more graceful, is talking more about mercy and grace. And when you have looked at it and read it, you will understand that the Tanakh and the New Testament, both of them show God, reveal God. It shows how God opened himself up to Moses as a graceful God, as a forgiving God. And many, for many generations he forgives sin, but he is also punishing, he also punishes sin, but it's the same God. These are not two different gods. It's not either this kind of God, that kind of God. He is the same in both, both Testaments, in the Tanakh and in the New Testament. And it's all together, it belongs all together, and this is how God reveals himself. So, think about, meditate on his grace and upon his mercy and think about his punishment also. Independently, if you are a Jew or not a Jew, think about it. It's very serious. Now, coming back to Christmas. <coughs> you know very well that it is a big, a great Jewish feast. At least when you read the Gospels, we see that all Jews rejoiced. Uh, I, I want to say that I'm not sure uh, if Yeshua was born in the month of December, also not on the 25th, I don't think so. But there is a little probab probability, but I don't think it's the right date of birth. Nevertheless, we should look into the Bible. Who is rejoicing there? The Jews rejoice about the birth. Men and women. When Yeshua was born, it was a great Jewish joy among the people. It was a Jewish happiness about the birth of Yeshua. The Jews rejoiced. There was such a big joy among them. <coughs> because at that time they, there was a high expectation about the Messiah. And when they started to say, now the Messiah is coming soon, when Zechariah talked about uh, John the Baptist, and when John the Baptist was born, there was a great joy. 
because he was pre he had to prepare the way of the Messiah. There was an angel appearing to Mary. And the angel told Mary or Miriam that she would be, become pregnant through the Holy Spirit and she was happy, she rejoiced. And she sang a song to the Lord when she became pregnant. And Joseph, her husband, he got the revelation that she is pregnant through the Holy Spirit. And, and the name of the Messiah would be Yeshua. His name should be Yeshua. That was uh, how they were supposed to call him. And why? The, why should his name be Yeshua? Because he would um, save his people from sin. Whom should he um, save, redeem? Who? Who is his people? <laughs> you don't don't have to be afraid. It's not it's not difficult to guess. It's the Jewish people. Jews, just pronounce it Jews because it's a fact. Then he he is born. And the angels are praising him. And the shepherds praise him. And the wise people come from another country to bow down before him. And then he's brought to the temple and everybody is rejoicing. Who? Jewish people. Jewish joy. Here, the, here is the hope. The hope has come to the people. And the very last person in this story takes Yeshua on his arms. He is a prophet. He says, this child is a light, is a light to the nations. This child will be a light to the nations. This is mentioned for the first time in the Christmas story, that Yeshua will be a light to the nations. <coughs> it's the first time when other nations are mentioned in such a beautiful and good way. It's mentioned. It's a beautiful picture. Everything is full of praise and the Jews are rejoicing. And partly they rejoice that other peoples will get the light. Think about it. First and foremost, these are Jewish people. And also for the other nations, he has come. This is a principle of God. First to the Jews, and then to the nations. 
but not less. The God's mercy, all of God's mercy is for all peoples, for everyone, from the Jews to the nations. The grace, grace and salvation for the Jews and for all nations. Yeshua is born, was born for the Jews and for all peoples. The kingdom of Messiah for the Jews and for all nations and peoples. The eternity, in eternity for the Jews and for all peoples. It was such a great joy that Yeshua was born because God has visited his people. And the prophecy was fulfilled that his name would be Emmanuel or to describe him with a name. Emmanuel, God is with us. And God has appeared to his people. And not only to Israel, he visited this earth. He visited this um, mankind. God has God appeared to us when he brought this salvation and bringing forgiveness and giving us the possibility to have fellowship with him. I think I have said enough about Jews today. Maybe some of you are sad when they hear, oh, again, these Jews. And I will not um, um, put an accent, I will not speak about this now anymore, or not, put a, not focusing about the Jews now any longer. I would like to read the Christmas story in the Gospel of John. John chapter 1. Verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. 
All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man who comes into the world. He was in the world, in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him to them, he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Here we don't, we almost do not see any Jews here, with the exception of John. With the exception of that he came to his own people, who did not receive him, unfortunately. Here, the prophecy of Isaiah 59 is fulfilled, that the Jews did not uh, receive their Messiah. I think it was Isaiah 53. And all what we see here is the light to the peoples, for the nations, that he came into this world and the world did not receive him, not recognize him, not only Jews, but mankind, peoples. He came to the Jews, but they did not receive him. And those who received him, they got the right to be called children of God. Think about this passage for a minute. The Word became flesh. The light came in the body for all of us. It starts with the fact that the word is God. We do not see any newborn child. We do not see any pregnancy here. We do not see any birth here. And we do not even see joyful people here. We see light. That's what we see here. We see God, who came into this world in order to give us life, a valuable life that is worth living in his light. This beginning of the Gospel of John, it's, uh, it's uh, not really immediately understandable. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This was with God, and all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made. And it's not really immediately clear why it is written here. 
in order to show us who came, who has come, who to, in order to show us who is with us, in order to show us who was born, to give us life, to give light to us. There are many possibilities to describe what it means to walk in darkness, but this is not for us. 2,000 years ago, the light came into this world because the world was in darkness and the light stayed with us until today. Yeshua Yeshua gives life until today. New life. This is why I'm so happy that Yeshua was born, that the Word became flesh. God's Son came in the flesh. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that many people during Christmas time think about this event, why Jesus came. It is such a wonderful opportunity to praise Yeshua and to testify about him, to talk about Yeshua to others. Unfortunately, many Messianic uh, Jews do not like Christmas. They think about the um, the pagan roots of this feast. Uh, praising the, the God of the Sun, the, the trees as um, a pagan um, root, pagan history. But I would like to say, you think about the wrong things. What the difference does it make? When you hear about the birth of the Messiah, or when there is an event that is talking about the birth of the Messiah, be like Moses, praise the Lord. Be, be like Mary or Miriam, my soul praises the Lord. Be like the angels. Praise Him like the angels do. Praise the Lord. Be like the shepherds. Let us look at the newborn. Be, be like the wise men bringing gifts. Come and bow down before Yeshua. Be like the people who took Yeshua on their arms in the temple, the Messiah who was expected so much. God has visited his people, he has appeared to his people. It's not important when exactly he was born. It is important who was born. It is important who has come and for what purpose he came. He came to bring the light. He came to bring forgiveness to us. He, is, he has come to give us new life and eternal life. 
Praise, praise the Lord for the fact that Yeshua was born. And with this thought in our hearts, Merry Christmas and a blessed Hanukkah. <laughs>